My motivations for studying with the OU were to gain a bachelor's degree in psychology. My goals and ambitions are to work in education and ultimately be a primary school teacher and then perhaps further in the future to work towards becoming an educational psychologist. And I've almost completed doing a PGCE. It makes me feel really proud to have got to this point. Um, it's a great sense of achievement. With COVID, it was really tricky finishing off my bachelor's degree last year um, in the first lockdown when I had my children at home and I had to homeschool them. Um, and then also with my PGCE, I had to teach um, in an environment which was under lockdown. My next step to achieve my goals is to just get as much work experience as I can as a teacher. So once the course is complete, um, I will volunteer or do some supply work until I find a perfect job. And after that, I will do um, a master's in education. The advice that I would give to other students is to try to get to know your tutor, even if it is just on email. At the moment, I am thinking more about my career as my studies come to an end. So my focus is on getting relevant um, work experience that will really help me get a great job. I am also thinking about continual professional development because it's really important with what I want to do. My motivations for studying with the Open University are to gain a new qualification um, for some self-improvement that I could do something completely different and that I can really actively follow a passion of mine. I am studying a psychology degree. The decisions I've made so far about my career goals have been to look for work experience opportunities for the future um, and also to build relationships with people that are working in my field. On the one hand, it feels exciting um, I'm working towards a career goal. Um, I'm taking an active role in making things happen. Um, on the other hand, I'm quite nervous too because um, I'm having to do a lot of this stuff by myself, uh, which I've never had to do before. Um, and it's been certainly a baptism of fire in terms of like research. I have um, health issues um, and those health issues have impacted in terms of um, being mobile and getting out and about meeting people. The next step that I'll be taking towards my career goal and ambitions is to attend any upcoming conferences. One piece of advice I'd give to other students is um, understand the power of communication. You know, talking to other people can really help with your next steps. Um, you know, and building relationships with people in your area of interest um, and also to get support around the things that you find difficult. Good morning and a very big warm welcome from me, Karen Foley, here in West Wales on a gorgeous sunny day, welcoming you all at home to our Student Hub Live event. Well, it's fantastic to see so many of you here today. This is a really special event. We're going to talk about returning to studies with confidence. And you've all been chatting in the chat box about the World Cup and where some of you were in 1966 as well. So I'm guessing we've got some people who may not have studied for quite some time here with us today. And we may have people people who haven't studied for a very short period of time. But we're really hoping that during this hour, we can answer all your questions and give you some inspiration, hear from some students and staff at the university about some of the best options for you. So it's a very short period of time and I have four very special guests today here um, who we're going to be talking to. I have two students, Pierce and Heidi. I have Jamie from our student support team and Linda from our open programme. So a big warm welcome to you. We'll come to you in just a moment. I'm also joined by Mary, who is um, managing our chat desk. So you'll be talking in the chat and answering questions and she'll be filling us in. So if there's something you'd like to know from any of our panel today, then please do let us know. But anything goes 
those in the chat. And because I imagine there are lots of questions, particularly if some of you haven't studied for some time, I've asked a special panel of people to come along and join us. We have Catherine from the library, Paloma from the OU in Scotland, Helena from the OU in Wales, Rory, Lauren, Ellie and Vicky also from our student support teams. So they will be able to answer your questions in the chat. So please do make the most of this time. But if there isn't uh, an answer to those questions or for some reason they're missed out, then you can email studenthub at open.ac.uk and we will forward your questions to people so that they can get back to you. So sit back, enjoy the show, talk to yourselves, enjoy meeting other students. But let me introduce you first to Mary, who is on our um, hot desk. Mary, how is everyone out there today? Hi. Yeah, no, everyone's great. And it's really nice to see we've got some really lively um, and engaged students here. We're all chatting about anything from favourite biscuits through to the football yesterday, which I didn't actually get to watch, but never mind. Um, and, and then we've started to even uh, people starting to talk about um, what they might be studying at the moment or what they were studying before. So that's really good to see all the students kind of engaging and chatting with each other because that's what you know makes this event really special. Absolutely. Brilliant. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Mary. So let me introduce you um, to, my, to my first guest, Linda. Um, Linda works um, in our open programme, but Linda's also been researching the experiences of students who haven't studied for some time. And she's also been a student herself. Linda, big warm welcome to you. Um, where are you today and what's the weather like? Good morning. I'm in Folkestone today. And although it's actually the second sunniest place in the UK, it's raining. Um, so not perfect, but hopefully the sun will come out later on. Brilliant. Now, you've been researching um, some of the experiences of students who've deferred, which means that they've um, maybe paused their studies partway through and, and aiming to pick it up a little bit later. I wonder if you can tell me um, some of the stuff that you found out about those students and perhaps offer some tips for, for people who are watching here today who may have been in a similar position. OK, so there's... Um there are kind of two groups of people that, that defer, really. There's the people who defer because something happens in their, in their life, so a home issue or a work issue that triggers um, a need to take a break because you just can't fit the study in. And then there's those people who there's maybe not an obvious trigger, but there's, you know, things have kind of come together and for some reason they've decided that they need to take a break out of study. Now, that might be, um, you know, there's a natural break between modules anyway. Um, so that's a short break, which sometimes works for people. Some people have deferred. So they've got partway through a module, they've taken a break and they'll be returning to that same module. And then the third group of people is those people who decide maybe to take a year out, maybe take two years out, three years out. Um, and it's all you know, it's flexible at the OU so that you can make these decisions to have a bit of a break and then pick up your studies again when you're ready. And, you know, when that is will be different for different people. Mm. I mean, the one thing about the OU is that sometimes, and I remember when I was an OU student, starting that degree seemed insurmountable. It seemed like six years, which I, I, you know, when I did my OU degree, I was in my early 20s. And that seemed like a really, really long period of time. And my goodness, it wasn't. But I mean, Linda, you run. And I often think that, you know, studying with the OU is a bit like a marathon. It's, it's an endurance event. It's, it's not a sprint. And because of that, there's certain things that, that students may benefit from in terms of, you know, keeping, I guess, that end goal in sight. Yeah, it's a very similar thing, really. Some of the time you're going along, it's working quite smoothly. And then some of the time there's a bit of a bump or you trip over um, and you need to reevaluate sometimes. Um, one of the things that I've heard from several of the students I've spoken to in my research is that they found taking a great break really useful because then they have really thought about why they're doing what they're doing and are they on the right path and are they going the right speed um, so it's a, a, an opportunity to reflect on what you've done so far and um, consolidate some of that and then decide on the next step which might be returning to the path that you were on or it might be deciding to do something different so it, it is a real decision point I think when you decide yes I'm going to to pick it up again um, and then obviously around that 
there's the whole sort of infrastructure around it of deciding, you know, how do I make this work? What interrupted things before? Has that changed? Can I manage it differently? Um, so a little bit of preparation to really get into it, know what your goal is and know how you're going to achieve it. So very much like a marathon training program, really. Mm. And often there are, there are different obstacles that get in the way. I know people at home are talking about juggling um, children um, and studying. And I think the pandemic has been one of those cases, particularly with homeschooling, where some people have found um, you know, a real opportunity to have a break um, and to really focus because they're not doing other things. But for other people, um, it's been a real challenge. I know for me, trying to get the homeschooling done um, was really, really quite difficult. And I think there have been a lot of impacts for people right now um, who may have just thought, actually, you know, I, I need a bit of a break from this work. While all of these things are happening. Yeah, very much so. And I, I found that um, as soon as they announced that schools were closing, the first thing I did was apply for a study break from my research degree. Um, so I very much understand that. Whereas some other people, they may be been on furlough, they've not had so much to do, maybe they haven't had children to homeschool. And so that's been an opportunity to, to really crack on with things. Um, so yeah, it's a very different situation for, for different people. Um, but you know, we've we've come through as best we can um and now is you know it's a good time to think right where where do i go from here um and for me that was coming back to study and although i officially came back in september i've kind of drifted in so i think i'm fully back now um and just kind of heading off on that path again um so for some people you might have deferred and your module is starting again in october so you might want to think about well how am i coming back in am i going to start again at the point where i stepped out or am I going to start again at the beginning of, of the module and gradually ramp up to that point where I kind of more formally rejoin the course and start doing the assessment again? So mm. there's, there's quite a lot of planning to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to talk to Pierce a little bit later about that in terms of what the student support team can offer for those students who may want to think about picking up. But Linda, before we move on, how interesting, though, that you're researching the experiences of students who may have paused their studies and, and then yourself as a student, you've had to pause your experiences. I wonder if you might share um, some of those things for you and, and perhaps, um, you know, talk a little bit about what that experience has been like. It must have been difficult to, to put something that you care about on hold. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually been really valuable for my research um, to have had this break because when I did my OU degree originally, I, I wouldn't say I sailed through, but I went through continuously and didn't take a break. Um, and so actually to have had the experience of taking that break, like the people that I'm doing the research into, is really, really valuable because although I had empathy with them before, I actually know how it feels now. Um, and I did find it very, very difficult to, to stop studying. Um, it felt like I'd given up. I felt like a failure. Um, so it was, it was really difficult from that respect but on the flip side it was also a case of well I've got no choice here I have to do this because I have to homeschool my son so it it was a kind of a mixed bag of emotions which was quite challenging I knew I was doing the right thing but equally it felt like the wrong thing in many ways and then picking up again um you know I'd filled my time with something else I'd don't really know what it was necessarily, but suddenly I had to find time again um, to fit the study in. And that does mean giving up some other things. Um, so watching less telly. I didn't watch the football last night, um, although I'm not a football fan, so I'm not bothered. But <laughs> I watched the highlights of the tour rather than the whole of the tour. Um, so it's about making those judgments as to what things are really important to me and um, which ones I'm going to give up to be able to do the study. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And the tour is very exciting, if I, if I must say. I've been watching the highlights also, <laughs> much better than the football. Um, but uh, the difference is opinion there, I think, and, and I certainly imagine that, that would be uh, there for our viewers at home also. I mean, Penelope's raised a really interesting point. Um, she's got th uh, three under sevens, so she's deferred because of the homeschooling. But what she says is it's given her a really good opportunity to reassess things, um, and she's going to go and do a different module. And Linda, I'm, I'm going to talk to Pierce about that in a minute because he's had a very 
similar experience. But you've you've done this also yourself. You, you've sort of changed your directions in terms of your own study. Um, and here representing the Open Programme, and Mary also is one of our Open Programme colleagues as well. Um, this notion of flexibility, not only in terms of when you're studying, but also what you're studying, can be really appealing to people, especially when we do, you know, have different directions in our lives. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, sometimes just different things become interesting at different times. Um, six years is a long time that we generally study OU degrees over. And during that time, things change. So there's often reasons why you might think suddenly, well, actually, I'm, I'm done with, with that bit. I want to move on to do something else in, instead. Um, and so, you know, I would strongly say to people, do consider seizing that opportunity um, because study is so much easier if you're studying something you're interested and passionate in. Um, so, you know, that re-evaluation, I think, is, is really useful. And from the students I've been speaking to in my research, um, quite a few of them have said that they found that break really useful because when you're coming back, you you recommit somehow in the same way as you did when you very first started. It was a very big step to start in the first place. And so that coming back, it reaffirms that that's definitely what you want to do or you've made a decision to do something else. Um, and they found that really motivating and really valuable in going forward with their study further on as well. Mm. No, thank you, Linda. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, we're going to leave that bit for now because I'd like to introduce Pierce to everyone at home because um, Pierce is a really, really interesting story. Welcome, Pierce. Where are you and what's the weather like? Good morning. Um, I'm in Mansfield at the moment. The weather's quite overcast, but there's no rain. Fingers crossed for now, at least. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely day. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Do you want to share um, a little bit about your story? You've, you've had quite an interesting experience with your studies, and I imagine that a lot of what Linda's been talking about um, really hits home with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think, again, it's that, like what Linda said with the stop starts, um, that's played a, a massive, massive impact in what I'm studying now and what I have studied previously. So when I finished school, um, when I finished my A-levels at 18, you know, the, the typical path was to go to uh, Bricks and Mortar University. I had an ultimatum at that point as to whether to, to do that or whether to go and, and, and work full time. I chose work and ultimately thought I'll pick up with the Open University. Um, all of my A-levels were in the sciences. Um, I'd studied biology, chemistry, physics and science. So when I when I moved to the OU, my, my sort of initial thought was, well, why don't I study science? And I took on natural sciences. I ended up deferring twice um, uh, when I was studying that, that course because my heart just, just wasn't really in it. Um, but eventually, through one thing and another, I ended up finding the right course. And now I'm just about to go into my fourth year. So it has been a bit turbulent and a bit up and down, but I do really resonate with that, with that taking a break, uh, especially to find the right path for you. Yeah. And it's been hard for you, I think, because you were one of the first in your family to go to university and study at this level. Um, and, and, you know, you're young and, you know, coming sort of out of school and, and thinking about what you could do. I, I imagine having money and the opportunity to do something must have been quite hard for you. And, and I guess, you know, in terms of what Linda was saying, focusing on that end goal and what you wanted um, was really important. And I think what's interesting for you, Pierce, is that, you know, you've sort of found something you're really passionate about and you're talking about the science and things and you, you've sort of emerged into quite a different area now which is um which is really exciting for you and has just had a massive impact on your life yeah yeah definitely definitely and I think like you say when when people are 18 or, or when they're young and um, just finished school there's a massive expectation for people to have to almost set out their entire life as soon as they hit 18, decide where they want to go for university, what career paths they want. And I think a lot of the time we don't take that, that break. We don't take that time to think about where we really want to be in ourselves. And, and quite rightly, as you said, now it's moved away from doing something that I studied just because I was good at it to something that I'm studying because I, I'm, I'm really passionate about it. Um, and it's, it's ultimately worked out that I have the best of both worlds. You know, I'm in full time work study and being able to earn that little bit of something to you know, help my savings goals, things like that. But I'm also working towards a personal goal of, uh, of achieving my degree. Mm. Now, you would paused your studies. Um, tell us a little bit about 
what happened there with that? I mean, because one of the things Linda was saying is it's important to sort of think about, I guess, what the barriers have been and whether they're different. Um, and you had a couple of false starts, didn't you? I did indeed. Yes. Yes. So the first two years, it, it was natural science that I was studying. Um, the first one, I think I ended up submitting a, a couple of the sort of online assessments and one of my my TMAs. Um, and, and I just I never carried on. It just got put on the back burner. I forgot about it. I didn't think about doing it. And to be quite honest, at, at that time, I, I didn't feel the want to have to to take that time out of my personal life to have to try and study. So I ended up deferring. Uh, unfortunately, the same thing happened with that second year as well. Um, my heart just wasn't really in it. You know, I, I didn't come home from from work and think, right, I need to sit down and study now. I would have rather have gone out and socialised or, or, you know, played games, some, something else, anything not to not to study. And it wasn't until I had a conversation after that second deferral with my student support team where we sort of had a sit down and think about where I am, where I want to go and what I'm doing this for. But I ended up actually completely changing my path um, to something that I now really enjoy and really want to do. Mm. Brilliant. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about um, exactly what you're doing um, in a moment. Um, Richard, I'm afraid I can't play the cello right now. I'm just returning um, from a wrist injury. So I've had to have nearly two months off that and doing various other things as well. Um, But Mary, let me come to you and see how everyone's doing at home. We've asked people about, you know, some of the reasons why, um, you know, they're thinking about returning to studies right now. I imagine there's lots of chat going on about a variety of things. Tell us how everyone is. There is loads of chat going on, which is great. Um, I think what's been really nice is is everyone's kind of sharing their own reasons. Some of them um, uh, sort of had to stop their study for reasons that um, it, it wasn't maybe their, their choice. Others made an active choice to stop their studies. So I think all of that's coming through and that's quite good good to understand the you know the wide variety of different reasons as to why students may have had to pause their study but there's some really good conversations going on um, between the students as well and you know our, our great advisors as well about how to kind of take that first step so um, uh, you know, they were saying somebody was saying that actually that they're quite they're finding the, the the website quite difficult, and there's some great resources that we've got that we've been able to add links to to help students, um, you know, uh, get tips about navigating around their module sites. Um, and I think what's also come across is is about reaching out for help. The student support team are there, and also people have really said that their ALs have been great at kind of helping them through and um, making those first steps back into study and giving them some good advice. So there's always support out there and that's really come through in people's stories and what they're sharing in the chat. <coughs> no, absolutely. And it's not just about, um, you know, what you're studying. I mean, um, as Alexa says, you know, um, Linda's 100% correct. If you want to succeed um, as a mature student with lots of responsibilities, you really have to be passionate about what you're studying because that just helps to, to keep you motivated and committed. Um, and also their comments about looking after well-being being really important. Um, one of the things I think that's so interesting about the Open University is, is that there is this pastoral element as well. So in addition to sort of learning the content, there are heaps of people like we have here today in the chat um, who can support people in their studies. And for some people, it's really reassuring to know that. So, so let's let's go to Pierce, who is um, working in our student support team. Um, Pierce, hello. Where are you today? And, what, and what's the weather like with you? Oh, Jamie, sorry. I, I did this the other day and I knew I'd do it. I keep calling Jamie Pierce. I'm so sorry. How are you? What's the weather like? Uh, I'm not too bad. Um, I did watch the football yesterday and I was ecstatic with the result. Um, I'm in Manchester. It's, it's overcast like it was with Pierce, um, but it is warm, which I'm very glad of, uh, especially with lockdown almost ended. It's nice to be stuck indoors when it's at least warm. Yeah. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? It really, really does. But I often, I, I when I used to study, it was always, I'd start in, in September and then I'd have the summer period off and I think, oh, it's going to be awesome. It's amazing. And then it was only like six weeks or something. And then it often just tended to rain. So, um, but it does, it does fill your heart with hope, doesn't it? So you, you must uh, listen to these stories um, all the time from people. What, what, I mean, tell us a little bit about um, the student support team and, um, and, and some of the sort of stuff that you might sort of um, do to help students 
students who are deferring. And I mean, you know, like uh, Pierce had had issues where, you know, he was talking to the student support team. And in fact, it was them who said, hey, listen, <laughs> if you don't keep going, then then you might not be able to keep going because um, of the way that things are funded. So I guess sometimes you're having hard conversations. Sometimes you're having nice conversations. What, what can you share with us today? Yeah, it's definitely a mixed bag. It's um, is it's quite it can be quite a hard job at times, but it is very very sort of rewarding. Um, just riffing off some of the things that both Pierce and Linda said, there was some really good stuff. So, what really resonated with me with Linda was when she said one of the feelings that she had was failure. One of my key sort of aspects in my job is helping students reframe that. There's you know. I'm actually a student of engineering, so it really sort of comes into um, my sort of repertoire to change that attitude to say, you know, don't see it as a negative. It's not failure. It's something to learn from and we can move forward from it. Don't dwell on it. So I have a lot of students who I will talk to where they are deferring. Like they've said, it's a case of, you know, they're, they're in a bad place sometimes um, and it's about sort of getting them to see the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes to say look we can stop this time we'll come back with renewed energy um, that'll work with the motivation because they, they won't be feeling on the back foot and it can be a really useful tool um, and again sort of jumping on from from that um, that can lead into sort of fitness for study as well so you can sort of see what might have been going wrong at that time so again learning the lessons it's sort of you know was time an issue can we plan for that in the future was you know the the area that you're studying sometimes you know I've had conversations with students and it's maybe their first module they've been out of study for a while they've come to us and you know the flexibility is definitely there but you do still need some kind of rigidity. So stuff like, you know, having a desk to work at or a dining table or somewhere to spread out and really sort of, you know, get stuck into study is a, is a big thing. Um, and again, coming off both of what um, Pierce and Linda said is about sort of motivation. You know, you need to want to do what you're doing. Um, and my role is very much to try and make that a reality, make sure that you are enjoying it still. Um, and that we can move on successfully with stuff. Mm, brilliant. So tell us at home, um, what made you think about returning to study in the first place? So, Jamie, you've mentioned two things here. Um, one is the sort of, I guess, the, the practicalities and this notion that, you know, sometimes, I mean, times are really, really hard. I've just been doing um, some of the exam boards and looking at some of the special circumstances from my students, which had me in tears yesterday. Some of the stuff people have been dealing with has been monumental. And sometimes, you know, I guess we just need to sort of reprioritize and say, actually, I need to pause. But I know, I mean, when I was studying, I, I also um, had, a, had a moment when I had to pause my studies and I kept thinking, oh, it's not an ideal time to start. You know, I was thinking, you know, what factors have changed and, and what's still there. But I also, I think because life had gotten the way, I sort of felt a bit nervous myself thinking, well, something else might happen, something else might come up, you know, it, it's never ideal. And, and I can imagine that for some people sort of waiting for that moment when it might look like the coast is clear, um, could mean that the years can just sort of inadvertently go by. Do you find that? Um, it can do. Um, I think um, more, more often than not, we do have students come back sooner rather than later, because we do have sort of certain incentives. So when you defer a module you know if anyone here has done that before you'll know that we have things like fee credits to try and encourage okay. people to come back sooner rather than later we also have campaigns where we will actively contact people who have been away from study for a while to talk about okay. what plans they've got you know do they want to continue studying can we help them consider their options um and that that comes into as well knowing the landscape um so something else that i'll probably come in to talk about a little bit more later is you know if you've been out of study for a year or two um if you've already started especially our qualifications can change um and it's also sort of just saying you know you know this this is sort of what's on the table um c can we help get you back into mm. things uh, and just help where we can 
because because one of the things is the sort of the nice help and then as as Pierce had the sort of um threat and I wonder if you could tell us about um people are asking in our chat um students who've got this um dreaded uh, restricted status system um and you know because because sometimes you, you you sort of get restricted in your studies and you may not be able to what can you tell us about how to move forward and get back to maybe studying full-time with like 120 credits so um, it's obviously this is going to depend on everybody's individual circumstances. And if you ever get into this situation, I would strongly recommend giving us a call at the student support team to talk things through. Um, but the restricted status is something that I speak to a lot of people about. And it, the, the emails that we send automated don't help things, unfortunately, but it's not something to fear. It's actually quite a good thing. As again, when you're looking at it in the right way, um, the restricted status, it just means that you have to apply to continue studying. Um, it's basically asking for permission, which again, wording's a bit off. The process is that you speak to one of our educational advisors, so they're a step up above from me. Um, and they're basically there to look at you as an individual, what are the things that are potentially holding you back? Um, is there any barriers that we can help with? Is there any support that we can put in place? So a big one might be, you know, you might suffer from a disability that you've never told us about before, but it is affecting your study. Can we help sort of mitigate that with the disability support? Um, it might be that you just want to talk about some of the things that you are struggling with in terms of time, in terms of motivation, can we help with that? Like before, are you on the right degree? And after that conversation, it is purely there to stop you pouring money into something that isn't going to work necessarily. It's very much there to put you in the right direction. You know, sometimes whether you know it's or not, um, but it is, it's always in your benefit and it's it's not as bad as it seems. So obviously any emails that you get or if anyone's telling you otherwise just just follow the process it's there to help mm, brilliant and we're going to hear from Pierce a bit later about how he dealt with that particular issue as well so Jamie that's absolutely fantastic people are also asking about mental health resources we have um uh, something called together all um which used to be called the big white wall um and there are lots of other resources um I think some of our colleagues from our student support team can maybe put some of those resources in the chat um because the open university do have access to lots of things so in addition to talking to somebody like Jamie about some of the ways in which you can perhaps manage your study um etc there are lots of other things that are available there for people to look at. So we've heard um, Karen is doing an access module. Um, I'm delighted because I'm chair of Y032, which is one of our access modules. Um, and she says that um, they, they're a really great way to help return to study. And in fact, you know, our access modules are specifically there to help people get in the rhythm of study, to upskill, etc. So perhaps if you are looking at returning to study, um, that may be something to look at also. Um, Natasha says she wants to make a career for herself after a few years break dealing with family stuff and is ready to start. She's scared but ready. And I think that's something that so many people will identify with Natasha. Um, Vicky is uh, going to return to study because her girls are in uni and so she has a new phase in life. She has lots of motivation to study for herself and that's wonderful, Vicky. Antoinette um, says her son and granddaughters moved out last year. So also, like Vicky, she can focus on completing last year's module for her ma uh, Master's in Mental Health. And Chloe um, has had to stop due to pregnancy um, and the side effects of that. But since the baby's been born, she's been dying to get back into studying. And again, I know so many of my students on my modules um, do have very, very young children um, and are juggling and balancing, but also are thriving and succeeding. And one of the things I often think that OU students really do is, is manage to keep going despite all of these challenges life throws in the way. Um, you keep going, you keep putting one foot in front of the other. And no matter whether you need a break or um, you, know, you need some support in that process, it's all about keeping on that path. Um, that's what makes the difference, I think, between them, um, between success and failures, just keeping going with all of that. So, so let's hear from Heidi. Um, Heidi, you've had a very different story to Piers. Um, Heidi's another um, student. Heidi, where are you and, and what's the weather like? Mm, Borata, good morning. Yes, uh, I'm in Cardiff and the weather is lovely and sunny. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, and tell us a little bit about your, um, your journey. You sort of started studying and just sort of kept going, didn't you? <laughs> Um, yes, that's right. Um, I left uh, school with very few qualifications and went straight into work. Um, 
uh, and then it, I was around about 40 in my certainly in my early 40s and I thought I think I might try and see if I can get myself some qualifications um, and I started uh, just signing up for one module uh, looked at what I thought I enjoyed at school um, and thought, yes, OK, I'll sign up for um, a beginner's French module. Um, and that's what I did. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the module um, didn't put myself under any pressure. I thought when it's finished, if I do well, maybe I'll sign up for the next module. Um, and that's what happened. And I did do well. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and after my second module, uh, I was awarded the certificate in French, uh, which for me was incredible. I was amazed that I could achieve that. Um, and then student services advised me um, by taking on another course, I could get the diploma uh, in, in French, uh, which I did. And then after that, it was, well, you've got half a degree. <laughs> Have a look at these options uh, to combine with your French to get your um BA honours degree. Um, so I then, I, then I started uh, with the business studies uh, and carried that on. So now the very proud uh, recipient of the business uh, BA uh, honours in French with business. Brilliant. So a whole range of things there that really sort of suited your own interests. And I guess for you, um, well, many students now, I think partly because of the way that the, the fees and the funding work means that you're sort of often signing up for that end goal. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Um, for you, it was sort of almost a case of actually having those qualifications along the way. But I guess for some people, it may be a case of, you know, sort of thinking about what those qualifications actually mean. For some students, achieving a certificate um, may be absolutely ample in terms of their aspirations. And, and that may be good enough and just maybe completing a couple of modules that will sort of, you know, make that complete can be a real driving factor yeah absolutely it was for me um I didn't want to put myself under the pressure of, of signing up for six years or for signing up for a degree um I just thought I'll see if I can do it as you know I, I believe I have it in me I'll see if I have it and and the the feeling of absolute pride when I got that uh, initial certificate was incredible and, and the buzz it gave me and I thought oh, I can do this and you know uh, I think similar to Pierce I'm the first person in my family to ever get a degree um, and the, the the immense feeling of pride the overwhelming feeling of pride when I put that that gown and that hood on and sort of walked over to my family um, was was just incredible, and, and that for me was was the icing on the cake, and that's what's been in you know kept me going really. Mm, absolutely. And I think, you know, it, it can be a real challenge for some people, especially if they're starting, you know, somewhat later in life. I mean, you know, Pierce is but a young spring chicken, but but people in the chat are sort of saying, you know, um, they're starting in their 40s, it's the new 20s. Um, You've sort of had two two different experiences, I guess. One is is being what we would call, I guess, typically an, an sort of older student. But the other experience you've had is, is doing two quite different things. And for some students, they might feel like, um, you know, they can really gel with a cohort. I'm with the psychologists or the business students. But for you, I mean, did you did you feel a sense of community and sort of um, how did you feel in connection with other people as you were sort of progressing along your qualifications, both, I guess, in terms of your, your, your age and also the nature of doing two quite different um, discipline areas yeah um I was quite surprised initially when I started the very first module um at how uh, a sense of community was was really well created um by the open university with the virtual learning environment um at the time we were also having monthly face-to-face -face tutorials in Cardiff with other students within our uh, module um I made some fantastic friends in that very first module and they're still very good friends of mine today and I think people might may feel with the open university you may not get that sense of student life and camaraderie um, and I would say that's absolutely untrue and I think initially you have to be self-motivated to get started um, but once you once you're started your fellow students and your tutors and the student support teams um become your motivators because, you know, whenever you're feeling down or you're not getting something or you're not understanding it, you know, somebody else will explain it to you in a different way. Um, and I would always say that if, if you're feeling that way, plenty of others will be feeling the same. Um, and by voicing that, um, 
you'd be amazed the support that comes back. And and today with the social media um, outlets that we have, as well as what's internal within the Open University, um, the, the support network is immense. Um, and, you know, I, I'm always encouraged when I see other students say, oh, I'm waiting for my t- first TMA to come back. And, you know, I'm really excited and I'm a bit nervous. And I always say, be proud, be proud of whatever you've achieved um, because mm. you didn't have to do it. Absolutely. And this is one thing I think I've been talking to everyone about this is that notion that sometimes when you're at school, um, I think Pierce, you were saying this to me, you know, you have to do it. You have to sort of do your GCSEs or whatever it is that you're doing. Whereas with the Open University, you're choosing to do something. And that sort of involves a whole range of free will um, and and also requires the motivation that you need to continue. Vicky's raised a really interesting point saying um, she's really enjoyed studying with students of all different ages because it broadens your perspective on life and you learn from each other because of this. Um, And it's certainly been my experience I mean I've I think sometimes people I've heard anyway that some people can say I feel too young I feel too old I feel too this I feel too that but actually you know I've I've when I've been teaching um I taught on a, um, a science module and um we had paramedics they knew so much about so many different things that I had no idea about I mean I of course knew the module that I was teaching but the life experience meant that we all were able to share um and, and grow within that and I think that's something that you know we should never underestimate even when you know you're somebody who may feel like you know you're an outsider all of our life experiences offer these different insights and lenses and ways that we can learn about the world by you know as as Heidi says talking to other students and gaining different perspectives on life um Colin says his body's almost 50 but his mind's in his 20s and they often have disagreements yes I can relate to this Colin it's it's a constant challenge isn't it but you know I'd I'd go with your feeling but um yeah age can be a really different thing And, and and again, we've got a real range of ages on our panel today here. So, so, so let's um, return to, to Linda again and, and think about um, this notion of choice. So we've been talking about things, um, you know, Heidi has chosen two quite different options. Linda, in your studies, you've also chosen very different things, as has Pierce. So, so can you tell us about the open qualification and some of the sort of flexibility that students may have? Yeah, so the open qualification allows students to pick modules from across the university. Um, so you you would do 120 credits at, le- at level one, two and three um, to make up your degree. And um, it allows you to create your own personalised degree. So, you know, we've got our name degree pathways and they're really useful. Some students know exactly what they want to do. And the name degree pathway is really useful for limiting the choice um, for lots of people. Um, so that they they know where they're going. But sometimes we're interested in in a variety of different things Um, or sometimes maybe it's the study intensity that drives it. So for me, most of my degree is made up of 30 credit modules because at the time I only had time to study 30 credits at once. So that kind of helped me to navigate through my degree because that was the intensity I was looking for. So there's a range of different reasons why you might look at the open degree and want to build your own um, particular pathway Um, or it might be that you're on a named degree and then you come to a module and you think I just really don't fancy that bit for some reason Um, and so you might decide to swap onto the open degree and and just substitute out one of the modules that you didn't fancy for some some reason Um, so it just allows you that flexibility to really make it your own um, and pull together different strands of interest um, and also that that control of study intensity can can be really important for students. Um, what are you studying or what would you like to study? Let, let's take a quick trip to Mary. How's everyone doing? Yeah, people are good. Um, and you can kind of really start to feel the, the the motivation that people have got about returning to study as they're talking about the different areas that they're wanting to study in and the different modules. Um, and, you know, some people are, are, are really um, sort of pulling on what Linda said about, you know, the 30 credit study 
30 credit path sounds uh, fantastic because that's a good way to go whereas others are sort of wanting to go you know at a faster pace which is great so that's a, that's a, a, another reason why um, you know the open university qualifications are great to provide students with that flexibility about how, how fast or how slow they can go um, but yeah so people are coming through so we've got Sarah she's studying physics and she's hoping to finish her final two modules this year um, and just lots of great stories about um, about where students are. So some are still at the very early stages and some are, uh, uh, you know, picking their, their study up again later on in their studies, which is great after, you know, having that break and then finding that motivation to get back into it again. Brilliant. Thank you, Mary. And for those of you um, who are thinking about studying after quite some time, um, we do these regular events here at Student Hub Live and we have a whole host of things to get you up and running for module start. So there are various skills workshops that we run um, in a slightly different interface, but we also do orientation and induction events. Um, so if you are enjoying today's programme, know that there's plenty more um, that, that's all lined up for you if you are going to um, begin your studies this uh, October. So let's go back to Pierce then, because we were talking a little bit earlier um, about how you sort of, um, you know, loved science at school and then thought you were going to go and do the sciences. And then um, you sort of thought about what you were doing, Pierce, and, and you realised actually that you wanted to do something quite different. So, so tell us about your thought processes then and, and how sort of you found the right path for you. Yeah, of course. So um, like I mentioned earlier, with science being just something I was good at, that's what I decided to initially study. I just thought, to be honest, for convenience and because I thought that's where I wanted to be. At that time, I didn't actually know where I wanted my final career goal to be. So it just kind of fit well. Um, but as we were mentioning earlier on with Jamie, it, it was that restricted status that was slowly sort of peering its head around the corner um, after I deferred my my second science um, sort of year. So I was sat in a Starbucks cafe in Nottingham um, just one afternoon having a coffee and I thought, right, I, I need to ring my student support team to get an idea of where I am and get an idea of where I could go. And that's when they said to me, well, let's take a moment to have a think about where you would want to be and try, you know, changing your module. Is this the right thing for you? Is this really where the end goal is um, sort of in your in your mind and to be honest no it, it wasn't so I took a bit of time to have a look on the OU website find some sort of other modules other things that might spark my interest um, and I ended up finding the computing and IT pathway um, spoke to one of the tutors and the student support team from that side and I ended up changing my module um, and it wasn't until I made that change because it was something that I was interested in because I thought it's either now or never. I've made this decision to study. Why not do it for a reason of passion instead of a reason of necessity? You know, I, I don't have to do this. So why not throw myself into something that I enjoy? Um, and now uh, here I am. And, and what's happened for you as a result of your studies? How's it changed um, your work situation? Well, um, it, it's been a little sort of up and down, shall we say. So when I first it, it initially started with natural sciences when I was 18, I was working full time. At, uh, sorry, I was working part time at McDonald's when I was um, doing my A-levels. And my manager sort of gave me an ultimatum and she said, well, you can either go off to university, continue, continue working part time um, and go and do your degree, even if it's not something that you're really interested in. Or if you stay full time, we'll make you a manager. And as I said earlier, it was that sort of pull of the money that made me think, actually, no, I'll, I'll stick with work and I'll study at the OU part time. Um, but when I finally changed my module to something that I was passionate about, I started picking up all different skills, whether that be talking to other people or contributing in tutorials, writing TMAs and gaining that sort of analytical stance, um, um, that analytical thought process that I'd never had before, the skills to be able to write correctly. Um, and ultimately, that's now changed my career pathway. And I now have my dream job um, with my local police force in intelligence, which I really couldn't be happier with, even though I've not finished my degree. And even though I've not actually got my certificate to say I finished everything at the end of it, all of those skills that I've learned up to now and going into my fourth year have all pulled together to help me develop myself and do something that I love. Wow, that is just awesome. So working from fast food to now being in, in a police um, environment is something amazing. Did, did your um, OU studies help towards that? And did it matter that you haven't yet um, finished your qualification? 
I think they help massively from a couple of, of aspects. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, it, it did give me the skills to to talk correctly about uh, and, and analyze things correctly and work in the most appropriate way for that environment, yes. Um, but also when I went for my interview, um, you know, my managers then saw that as a, a real achievement. I always was sort of told, don't talk about your studies because – you know, if you go into a, a work environment or go for a job interview, they might think, well, you can't put your 110% into work because you're studying as well. Um, but actually, it's the complete opposite. People see that you've got that motivation and that determination to not only give your 100% into work, but also try and develop yourself outside of your work environment. And they can see that you've got determination, that you've got motivation, because as we've mentioned on on, on this meeting today, it's all been a choice to, to study these modules. It's all been a, a choice to, to want to develop yourself. And employers see that as what I think are, are real positive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, everybody's nodding here because I think, well, everyone's students, including me. Um, but, you know, we've got Heidi um, and and um, Jamie and um, P.S. and Linda, who, who are all sort of studying. I'm, I'm also studying. I think so many people at the OU. Mary, are you studying anything at the moment? Not, um, but I, I will be returning to it one day. So the last module I completed uh, was a maths module, which I was very proud of myself for, for getting through because it just it was it was something about um, I wanted to prove to myself that I could still do it, um, and I did. So that was good. Uh, so yeah, it's just now deciding on my next module. Um, so because there's so much choice out there, it's just it's just as students have said in the chat box, it's about finding that passion and sort of you know really wanting um, to study something that I want to do rather than something I have to do. So uh, yeah, so I've got that's quite a nice decision ahead of me though. So it's good. It's a wonderful decision and there's so much there. There's so much new curriculum that is so exciting. Um, so, yeah, you've got a choice. Well, I hope this program's helping you, Mary, today. Uh, and, and do tell us about the goals that you're working towards in the chat. Um, Brian says um, uh, he has uh, wants to have new skills so that I can be a job changer. Um, so many people, um, like Brian, want to move into different jobs. Brian wants to move from civil service into the IT sector. And, and this is something I think, Pierce, with the cybersecurity, um, you know, these are really popular things. There's amazing new curriculum out there that, that's really sort of relevant for people. I wonder if we might just invite um, everybody to sort of come into our panel and think about this sort of notion about, um, you know, motivation and goals and changing things. We've all had different sorts of experiences um, in terms of changing things. Um, Linda, you, you changed um, a lot of the stuff that you were doing in terms of uh, where you started to where you ended up. Yeah, so I started doing um, science modules on my open degree and then I wandered off into law and then I finished off with some business studies as well. Um, so, yeah, I did really just follow my interest each year. Um, I looked through the prospectus and thought, well, I fancy that one and, and off I went. Um, Although one thing I would say to look out for is when I got to doing the third level modules, the, the choice obviously got smaller because quite a lot of modules I felt I wasn't adequately prepared for to take on. So when I got to that point, I had, did need to look at what I'd already studied before choosing my third level modules. Mm, absolutely. And, and Piers, you, you luckily started doing things that then could translate into your other qualifications. So um, that, that's the beauty, I guess, of some of these very broad, overarching level one modules. Jamie, what's engineering like? Um, phew, difficult. <laughs> the word of the stage three now, and it's the, the maths has gone a little bit crazy. Um, but I'm keeping up with it as best I can. Um, but it is, it's... Um, it comes down to that motivation, like everyone else has said before. I was one of those kids where everyone else was running to get on a roller coaster and I was too busy watching it from the sidelines, fascinated by how it worked. Um, so it just seemed natural for me to go into that direction. Brilliant, brilliant. And Heidi, we've heard from you also about how you've changed. How did you find the sort of um, support in terms of making those decisions to, um, to, to, to sort of add to your, um, your qualifications and get more there? Were you, were you sort of... Um, did you talk a lot to people about those choices or read about them? How did you make those choices to go into business then? Um, I think initially um, I took a look at the Open University website to see if I could work out what my options were, given that I had half a degree in a language um, and what other subjects I could possibly put with that to 
build um, a, a BA degree. Um, but I did speak to student services as well, and they made it very clear um, on the numbers of things that I could do and whether or not there were any restrictions in terms of time scales when I needed to finish it by if I was taking on a particular one. Um, I know things are slightly different in terms of the policies in the, the various countries of the UK and, and in Wales it's different to how it is in England in terms of funding and what you can do. Um, so student services made it uh, very easy for me to understand what my options were. Um, and in the end, it was it was a bit of a no brainer as well. Um, business is so widely um, respected, uh, you know, within the uh, academic world, but also within the world of work. Um, and I found it really useful to do it. Well, that has been an absolutely fantastic session. I hope that you have all enjoyed it. I hope you're feeling uh, a little bit more confident about your studies, but certainly that you know that there are lots of wonderful, friendly people at the Open University who can help you to make the choice that's right for you. So do keep in touch, do keep communicating, and also know that we have lots of events like this um, to, to get you geared up for module start. So check out our Student Hub Live website and you can subscribe to our monthly newsletter where we'll tell you all about the events that we've got lined up in store for you. Just give us your email on that and you can also tell us any feedback or if there are questions that you haven't had answered or perhaps that you haven't asked but that have uh, come to mind later then email studenthub at open.ac.uk and we'll triage those on to the right person. But as we've said today you know the very best people to speak to um, who can put you in touch with the most relevant areas uh, depending on what's right for you are our student support team. So do keep in touch with them um, through their uh, email and also uh, you can phone up at particular times of the day. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much um, for engaging and um, I hope to see you at another Student Hub Live event very soon. Bye for now. My motivations for studying with the Open University are to gain a new qualification um, for some self-improvement that I could do something completely different and that I can really actively follow a passion of mine. I am studying a psychology degree. The decisions I've made so far about my career goals have been to look for work experience opportunities for the future um, and also to build relationships with people that are working in my field. On the one hand, it feels exciting um, I'm working towards a career goal. Um, I'm taking an active role in making things happen. Um, on the other hand, I'm quite nervous too because um, I'm having to do a lot of this stuff by myself, uh, which I've never had to do before. Um, and it's been certainly a baptism of fire in terms of like research. I have um, health issues um, and those health issues have impacted in terms of um, being mobile and getting out and about meeting people. The next step that I'll be taking towards my career goal and ambitions is to attend any upcoming conferences. One piece of advice I'd give to other students is um, understand the power of communication. You know, talking to other people can really help with your next steps. Um, you know, and building relationships with people in your area of interest um, and also to get support around the things that you find difficult. My motivation for studying at the Open University is my desire to get a bachelor's degree in business and management, and I'm hoping to get promoted and um, have a managerial position. And one of my dream is to one day run my own business, given the opportunity to explore the possibility of applying for a job role that will put me in a position where I can develop, I can grow more professionally and personally I have no bachelor's degree to offer. When you want to apply for a managerial role, my plan in terms of career goals have not been affected so far. I can actually probably say that there are two reasons, and one is financial resource and the supporting documents. To further explore my career goals and ambitions is to just push myself to um, graduate and get my degree. 
So my one piece of advice is that it's never too late to study. Yes, it is challenging, but it's also fulfilling. So if you have a desire to transform yourself into something better, then you have to go for it.